Today's topic is frostbite. Frostbite is a type of injury that is caused by exposure to low temperature, resulting in freezing of the skin and underlying tissues. Frostbite is more common in the fingers, toes, nose, ears, cheeks, and chin. Exposed skin in cold, windy weather is more vulnerable to frostbite. But frostbite can also occur in the area of the skin covered by gloves and other clothing. There are three degrees of cold injury, frost nip, superficial frostbite, and deep frostbite. Frost nip is a milder form of cold injury that doesn't cause permanent damage to the skin. Usually, frost nip can be treated with first aid measures. Superficial frostbite is a serious case that requires prompt medical treatment. Ice crystal may begin to form in the skin. The skin may begin to feel warm, and some swelling may be observed, signaling that damage to the skin tissue is beginning to occur. However, if severe or deep frostbite is present, permanent damage is possible. This is dependent on how long and how deep the tissue was frozen. In such cases, blood flow to the area may stop, and muscles, nerves, blood vessels, and bones may be permanently damaged. If the frozen tissue dies, the affected area may need to be amputated. Most cases of frostbite occur in adults between 30 and 49, although children, older adults, and people with circulatory problems are at a greater risk. Complications of frostbite include changes in skin color, changes in or loss of nails, infection, tetanus, growth defect in children if frostbite damages a bone's growth plate, hypothermia. Causes Frostbite is usually caused by prolonged exposure to cold weather conditions, but it can also be caused by direct contact with ice, frozen metal, or very cold liquids. If a person experiences prolonged exposure to cold temperature, blood flow to certain parts of the body can drop dangerously to low levels. Such body parts include the fingers, toes, hands, and feet. This rapid drop in blood flow to the extremities allows the body to send more blood to vital organs, supplying them with oxygen and maintaining the core body temperature. Over time, the lack of blood flow to these areas of the body can cause damage to the skin and nearby tissues. Specific conditions that lead to frostbite include touching metals such as ice, cold packs or frozen metal, wearing clothing that is not suitable for any cold condition you are in, such that it doesn't protect against cold, windy, or wet weather, long exposure to cold and wind, risk increases as air temperature falls below 5 degrees Fahrenheit. The following factors may increase the risk of frostbite, alcohol or drug abuse, smoking, previous frostbite or cold injury, Disorders that impair circulation, including diabetes. Immobility and physical stress, such as dehydration, excessive sweat, and malnutrition. Being at a high altitude because of low temperature and low oxygen levels. Symptoms. Cold skin and a prickling feeling. Numbness. Hard or waxy looking skin. Red, white, bluish white skin. Clumsiness due to joint and muscle weakness. Diagnosis and treatment. To make a diagnosis, the doctor will make a judgment based on symptoms, the appearance of the skin, and a review of any recent activities that may have caused exposure to cold. To determine the severity of the frostbite and check whether the bone is damaged, imaging tests such as an X-ray, a bone scan, or MRI may be ordered. Treatment. Frost nip can be treated at home with basic first aid measures. For other frostbites, treatment option may include rewarming of the skin, oral pain medication, protecting the injury with sterile sheets, towels, or dressing, removal of damaged tissues, whirlpool therapy, where the affected area is soaked in a whirlpool bath. This aids healing by keeping the skin clean and naturally removing dead tissue. Oral antibiotics for infected skin or blisters. Intravenous injection of a type of medication called a clot buster, such as tissue plasminogen activator or TPA, 
that may help restore blood flow. Studies have shown that TPA may reduce the risk of amputation. Surgery in extreme cases. Thank you for watching our video. Please do not forget to like and share the video. Also, please subscribe to the channel to stay updated on our latest videos.